This is a sponsored video because I've got to save up money for my studio and this video is brought to you by Skillshare. I'm sure you guys are familiar. Skillshare is the top online learning community. It's chock full of knowledge to be shared from industry professionals, teachers, and plenty of experienced creators. I use it very often because the grind, she just don't stop. Lately though, I've been trying to get into some non-drawing related hobbies just to give myself a break, you know, something else to think about. So I actually picked up gardening. Um, indoor gardening, that is. Uh, <laughs> you know, I bought everything to get started and it all showed up next day and uh, it, I sure did remember it was the middle of winter. No one said I was that smart. I've been watching Gardening 101, a guide for growing and caring for plants by Geraldine Levine to try and pick up a few tips and tricks for growing my own produce. And I, I just think it's a really fun new application for Skillshare for me. You know, since most of the time I'm using it for something related to work. So this is just a really nice palette cleanser. Very good change of pace. And you know what? I could change my palette and cleanse my taste a million times over if I wanted to, because there's just so much else that Skillshare has to offer. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. And with that being said, on with the video. Difficult enough that this video itself is over a week month. late from my schedule and that for the first time ever, I'm pretty sure, you know, in my memory, I'm gonna have to split a speed paint into two parts. If you want to see the rest of Pichu's nonsense, Show up for part two next month. I'm working on it right now. Show up for part two next month. Next month. Next month. <laughs>fucking lie. Designing Pokemon is hard. Sorry this Pikachu as Eevee concept video has taken so very exponentially longer than anticipated. I'm extremely in my head about it. I've been working on a bunch of different concepts for all eight of those little fuckers and I'm still not done, which doesn't bode well with the contractual deadlines I have. So I had to think quickly. What video could I do that would be faster than redesigning eight type swapped Pikachus? And what I did was I unearthed a video concept that I had stowed away about a year ago, which was to open a booster pack of Pokemon cards, and then swap the types of whatever Pokemon I got. Yeah, that math doesn't check out. 20 being faster than 8, that doesn't... Okay, how about we just condense the challenge then, huh? Break them into pairs, exclude the bitches that wound up the same type. But, uh... Damn, yeah, 9 is still more than 8, huh? Uh, walk with me, though, walk with me. The Pikachus are really difficult for me because I want them to be held to a really high standard. Like, evolutions, those are some big fucking shoes to fill, that is a tall order. And I'm new to this Pokemon stuff, so I think part of my hang up is that I want more practice. So let's tackle these nine Pokemon type swaps as like a warm up. Limit myself to three concept sketches for each one that I do, do them quickly, and whatever I end up with, oh well, I gotta start on the final design. If I don't love the final design, I just have to live with it. I just have to do my best to see what I can learn, and you guys can give me some feedback that you may have in the comments, and then I see that all back to those choose. Except maybe I play Legends Arceus first, like, like just a quick break to play the game. Like, <laughs> I'm keeping my expectations low, but I just... <laughs> Pokemon, Pokemon owns my ass, okay, maybe, maybe it's gonna be really good. I hope I like it, I hope I love it. Ah! Oh dear. Uh, okay, uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll deal with you guys later. Uh, here, l l let's just, let's just get started. The relatively low stress Pokemon TCG type swap while attempting to restrain myself challenge. My first two cards were Duoblading Kingler. Now the trading card game only has monotype mons, and they don't have every type. So this duo blade is actually a psychic type, making my options a water type duo blade or a psychic type Kingler. And trying to wrestle a water type duo blade is so far out of my comfort zone that it would immediately boot me out of warm up Pokemon practice design territory. So psychic Kingler it is. I started off grabbing some references, just doing a little bit of research. I wanna go pretty easy on the research front though. Time is of the essence here. I grabbed some existing water and psychic type Pokemon and other crab Pokemon as some sort of style guide. Apparently this this thing called the Chasmagnathus granulatus crab is the world's smartest crab, or at least that's what a minute of skimming Google search results said. So I grabbed a couple of them boyos. I threw a couple other crabs on the reference board for the sake of it. The clearest idea I had going into my concepts was I wanted to give him these fun hypno eyes because I thought that might be, that might be kind of psychic-y. The rest was off the cuff. 
I hadn't really decided at any point if these type swaps would be treated like completely new concepts or like regional variants, but I mean, really, regional variants vary pretty wildly from glorified palette swaps to who the fuck are you. So I was pretty much just planning to wing everything. My first draft was just a Chris Massis Gravitatas crab body with the king's rock-shaped crown instead of Kingler's little thorn crown. And I put barnacles with gems on him because I thought he looked too plain as a psychic type without anything quirky like that. My second draft was focused entirely on trying to create something that looked completely different. You know, gems inside his crown, spindly little legs. Just experimenting as much as I could with shape language of the silhouette, really trying to get into that Pokemon feel. I wasn't really happy with either of them though. I kept coming back to how in my head the quintessential psychic types are a lot more like ethereal or ornamental looking. So I googled crab holding thing to see if there was any sort of like maybe symbiotic or parasitic relationships I could go off of, or if there were any crabs that were just kind of quirky like how jumping spiders sometimes wear dew hats. Mostly got crab holding a knife, should have figured. But then I found an article about these things called sponge crabs. Apparently they grab things like sponges to wear to protect and camouflage themselves. I, I skimmed it. I don't know, I'm not an expert. But the article mentioned one sponge crab that grabbed a starfish and I went, hey damn, there sure is a psychic type starfish Pokemon already. Maybe we can get like a little, little shoulder slow poke in this situation. Have a crabby take a starmy for armor, like a prize, huh? And that brought me to the end of my allotted concepts. It was time to sit back, reassess my thoughts on everything I just drew, and then take them to make the final design. Shape-wise, the second design was my favorite, but conceptually, I liked my third most. And I liked how the jaw that I gave the third one almost looks like a big, fluffy, cartoonish beard. I considered trying to bash those two together, and while I was pondering, it occurred to me that that sponge crab article that I skimmed, I, I didn't really understand what was happening in the picture. Like, you glance at this, tell me what the fuck you see. I had run off before I could really come to terms with how much I did not understand what I was looking at here. So maybe I should look up a sponge crab on its own. Ain't no way this bitch is real! Oh my god, hello, sir? Round fucking sir? Scoopable sir? Come here! I knew exactly what I wanted to do for my final design. I went right to work making the Kingler as round as I could possibly manage. Use the whole Sarmi on his back to just help round out that shape. Thin out the metal bits from the Sarmi's gem to look like a delicate crown. Really accentuate that jaw for the beard shape. Like I wanted the personality to read like that of a jolly fat cartoon king. Having his eyes all long and wide and hypnotic looking didn't quite suit that image, so I narrowed them out a bit. I, I had only one open and it was in a squinty fashion, and I kept the hypno stuff. And then I, I rose one of his claws in the air like he's ready to address his people. And honestly, I like it. I couldn't be happier with the start to this challenge. I'm, I'm fired up, I'm ready to keep going. The next two cards I had to choose from were Brakeson and Ferrothorn. I am not a fan of Ferrothorn. <laughs> I wouldn't know where the hell to start with this. Brakeson is in my wheelhouse though, so steel Brakeson it is. I already knew this was gonna be interesting because there's definitely steel types that don't look like they're straight out of a foundry. And like lore wise, I could go as simple as saying like this Brakeson's bones are made out of steel or they like to uh, eat it or something. Most of the steel Pokemon I grabbed as references were ones that were less visually obviously steel. You can tell because I didn't realize Jirachi was a steel type at all. I had no idea. I had to Google why it's a steel type. Because it comes from a comet, I guess, I suppose. Actually, I might steal that. Oh, <laughs> nice. I Googled, do stars have steel? And the first thing I saw was neutron stars have crusts of super steel, yoink. I figured I should grab some silver foxes for reference since silver makes sense with steel and there, there's my second Googling blunder for the video. After grabbing the actual animal, I went to see if there was any mythology or lore I could connect to the initial concept. So I looked up Star Fox, yeah, three, number three. Give it up for blunder three, everyone. Anyway, there's a constellation that's a little fox. I'll take it, I'm running. There I go. Brakeson was actually a lot more difficult than I had anticipated. I think more than anything, it was the ear fluff that really threw me off. Like in the original Brakeson, it's clearly meant to look like flames, and I was struggling with how to reshape them into something that suited steel without being odd. And it wouldn't feel like Brakeson to just straight up remove it. I tried shaping them to imply shooting stars. I, I tried giving him longer fangs to make him look sharper. I thought that might help with steel. I tried making the skirt hip fluff look more like fancy bloomers than a skirt. 
Ghost Bloomer is the right word? The, the medieval noble booty shorts imagery? Tried making his wand a sparkler and sticking it in different places. It wasn't really working for me though. The silhouette looked too clustered. It, it wasn't really getting seal vibes for me. I was already realizing something I was gonna run into with this challenge was how I'm essentially designing Pokemon to be monotypes no matter what. And some of these designs would probably pass easier if they were dual type with something. I mean, even here, like, making a, a fire steel dual type Brayson would have been a lot easier, but it didn't feel like I was properly embodying the challenge if I was imposing my own secondary typing, so I'm just trying to stick with the one. Keep that in mind, I suppose. The last draft is the one I think was closest to working. I mainly tried to clean up the silhouette and then for a weapon, I turned his tail into a sheath that had a sword with shooting star imagery, since I think swords read more steel than sparklers. And going into his final design, I tried to play off of that last concept. I angled the tail more to make it a bit more visually interesting and put the sword in its sheath. I tightened up the jacket so it just implied a jacket without actually giving him one because I thought the smoother look rather than the fluffy one would lend better to the typing. I, I changed the markings around. Honestly, I'm surprised with how unhappy I am with it. I think the colors are too out there by Pokemon standards. I just don't think steel at all when I look at it. Throughout working on the rest of the Pokemon designs for this whole challenge, I desperately just wanted to redo him. Just, just give him one more shot but I didn't want to go against the rules that I set up for myself this early on. Like I knew if I did it now that the rest of the video was gonna fall apart and I, I had to move forward. I just had to move forward. So let's just say that I still wouldn't have been thrilled if I had done this, but I wish I had just cleaned up the last concept design instead. I feel happier with that version. For the third design, the cards I had were Pangoro and Dreadnought, both of which are usually dual types, but the cards I had were Dark and Water respectively. I love Dreadnought, but I had a clearer idea for a water-type Pangoro right off the bat, so let's go. In fact, the idea I had was clear enough that I was really tempted to just jump straight to the final design to expedite the process, but I knew I really shouldn't do that. I should probably just cover all my bases. I just grabbed a couple of references, and for good measure, I looked up water bear to see if I got any particular breed of bear that loved swimming, if they would pop up, but instead I got tardigrade, and I'm not doing that, and I guess that's Googling blunder number four now. I was thinking of going for like a, a, a brownie grizzly bear since I'm constantly thinking about that scene in Brother Bear where they're all fishing for salmon. But we already have Ursaring for bears that are brown, so I don't know. Bro, Tardigrade also shows up when you Google bears that like water. Fuck off, dude. <laughs> With my first draft, what I wanted was a Pangoro that was like absolutely soaked. Like a bitch that just lives in a lake. Just climbed out of the water, his coat covered in algae, lily pad and cat grass hanging off him to bring that water theme home, and then I, oh, oh, <laughs> huh. I didn't have any better ideas. Here you go. Moving right along, next cards were Lycanroc and Sobble. Like with Brakeson, I figured Lycanroc was more in my wheelhouse, so I went with the water Lycanroc and also like Brakeson, I would come to regret that decision. I looked up water dog and I found this breed called a Portuguese water dog, handsome boy, lad, and I noticed that a good handful of them had this really funky haircut, which got me excited. That is easy shape language, baby. So I start trying to figure out how to format the question for Google when it auto suggests me Portuguese water dog haircut why. If no one's there for me, Google's there for me, can I get an amen? Apparently they're fluffy in the front to help absorb the splash and shock of cold water when they leap off of boats into it, and the back waves are shaved for maximum kickability, swimability, ability. Solid, yeah, it's solid. So first draft, I went pretty straightforward combining a lichen rock with a Portuguese water dog. It looks okay, kinda plain. I tried making the tail look like a drop of water, that wasn't going super well. So next, I tried shaping the fur differently. I gave him the collar looking floaty device. I made the tip of his tail look more like waves, but now he's just starting to look like a poodle, oh no. So my last chance, I tried to push the design more. I, I was trying to go off of how Lycanroc has fluff around his head that's clearly different from his head fluff. And I, I tried to keep the, the, paw, the paw markings. I tried to shape his tail sort of like a fin. I gave him different neck accessories to make up for the lack of giant pointy rocks to indicate his typing. And I step back and I look at all of these and I miss Kingler. Life was easier when I was drawing Kingler. I don't really like any of these. 
I don't think any of these fit the bill for a water type. I only halfway sorta like this one. I hate the other two. I really expected this dog to be easy and I'm suffering for it. This sucks. I don't like any of these and I don't know what to do. So I decided to take a break and <laughs> ta-da. Uh, here you go, puppy for your pocket. The next cards were Rockruff and Krogunk, and I thought a dark type Rockruff would be the easiest thing in the world. Did you know that Midnight Lycanroc wasn't part dark type? Because I sure didn't until I already finished drawing him. I mean, he looks like a dark type, though, don't he? So that's the whole next card then. I come back to the water Lycanroc, and I still hate his pussy. I isolate the one design that I kind of like. I try to play with how I can make it more obviously a water type, or maybe something more fantastical without technically doing another draft. I was thinking about how to bring some part of his element typing back to his neck again, like how the Lycanroc has literal rocks just jutting out of him. I was really drawing a blank on water things I could think of for his neck, though. I didn't think bubbles or fins would work. I played around for a bit. I got this version with pearls I didn't like. And then I made a version that I kind of did like right here. I gave him a floaty device for his collar and I like super exaggerated it. And I would have been okay with this. But this is so extremely bweasel. Like this is so extremely bweasel to an egregious degree. And I had to sit and decide because I know I'm trying to not go too crazy with the video. So should I just, should I just say fuck it and go for it? I, I mean, it's just like, this is just a casual retyping redesign. Would this be fine? Like, would Weasel forgive me? Is it not that big a deal? If I decide not to go forward with this, if I decide I have too much integrity, who knows how many more hours trying to make a better, more original design will take? Who knows if it'll even be halfway decent? I still want to redo breaks in. I put a pin in him. I moved on again. Next cards, we are almost halfway there. I had a Scatterbug, which is a grass type in the TCG, and a Shelter that's a water type. And after already struggling so hard with Lycanroc, God only knows why, but I went with water type Scatterbug. I googled water bug, I, I found a bug that's literally called giant water bug. I play Animal Crossing, I should have remembered that. But I was really hoping to find something more along the lines of bugs that hang out in water. Like the spiders that glide over water and God knows what other abominations are out there. But with a quick search, I only got giant water bug. There isn't a Pokemon based on that bug yet, so I considered it. But ultimately, I didn't really want to look past Scatterbug evolving into a butterfly. So I kept looking and I found these little weirdos. I think they're called like drain flies or, or moth flies. They hang out in drains, just fuzzy little freaks. I figured not everyone would be okay with seeing fly larva on the screen, so I didn't pull out its life cycle diagram for my references. I mean, take my word for it though, it wouldn't have been super interesting for scatterbug purposes. They're pretty generic looking. Yeah, the drain fly larvae, larva. Uh. They don't really get fuzzy until they're fully grown and it's their wings that get fuzzy, but I thought it would make for a more interesting look to incorporate the fuzz into the scatterbug. And that's definitely an unexpected problem that I'm having with this video, is I feel like drawing the whole line would capture the ideas and concepts better. But that's not the name of the game. And it's just a little unfortunate, because I'd love to redesign Vivian in this typing context. But if she wanted to be drawn so badly, then she would have been in my booster pack, now wouldn't she? I toyed with making the eyes or mouth drippy to play with the water typing. I tried either replacing the confetti looking bits on Scatterbug's collar with dewdrops, or encapsulating the neck in water altogether. And through this video, I'm also realizing I think that sometimes I overthink how much something needs to look like a certain type. Like a lot of Pokemon designs don't scream a certain typing in their design and instead depend on their habitat or their diet or their lore to explain why they are what they are. And I absolutely need to just start keeping that in mind more. I'm causing myself unnecessary stress. I pretty much just cleaned up my second design iteration for the final design. It's just some minor changes to the fuzz shape. I think, honestly, he's one of my favorite designs so far. He's just a fuzzy little lad. I like him. The next cards I had were a grass-type Snover and a normal-type Wooloo. And we gotta go back in time a little bit here. I, here, let me just show you guys a screenshot from my work chat. Five minutes later. Look at that face. I cannot say no to that face. 
For grass type Wooloo, like Rockruff, I skipped all of the concept stages. I just went right to work bringing my good buddy Patrick's design to life with some minor changes. To play to the grass typing, I made her horns into little flower buds. I added a few more petals sprouting about. I gave her two large flowers to be a tail and to tie her sort of hair bits together. Just to keep some variety, to keep her from looking too much like a Wooloo recolor. Got real cheeky about that flower design too. And ba-boom, ba-ba-booey. Thank you, Pat. The next cards were Normal Type Bunnelby and Psychic Type Sinisty, which stumped me for a brief moment before I got really, really excited. Because I'm sure there's places to go with a Psychic Bunny, but a Normal Type Living Cup of Tea doesn't really make sense, unless it's not the teacup that's alive, but a cute little animal using the teacup, presumably before that animal dies and goes on to hunt the teacup. And do you know what would be perfect for a teacup Pokemon? Teacup animals. I know teacup puppies and teacup piggies exist, so I googled teacup animals to see if I can find any more. Are you kidding me, Tardigrade? I fell in love with this image of a teacup Chihuahua, and I wanted to go with that because his dumb little head shape and his eyes are so excellent, so shaped, they're so shaped. Since I do three drafts, I also grabbed a Yorkie because the head to eye ratio shape was similar enough to the Chihuahua. And then a, a tiny teacup piggy because Oink Oink's so cute. Look at him, he's so small. Fix in your hand, fix in your teacup. Because the Sinistee teacup is so detailed already, for the animal, I really wanted to do my best to embody earlier Pokemon generations when you had just a, a little scrumblo that was like a blob with two colors tossed on it. You know, simple, but iconic, which is easier said than done. And I also wanted to play with where the animal would be placed in relation to the cup. Like how to incorporate the cup truly into its design rather than just placing two different things next to each other. So I got these three out. And to be quite honest, by the time I finished them, I was having a really hard time deciding because I don't think any of them are perfect. But I have a lot about each iteration that I do like. And instead of trying to pick on my own, I decided to take these drafts and I was going to post them to my Patreon to get some feedback. Probably the most engagement I've ever gotten on a Patreon post. That was cool. I was a little surprised by how neck and neck the bottom left and the top middle ones were voting wise. Like people seemed to like the pig, but it was the only one that was clearly lagging behind. So I was braced to try taking the yellow puppy and making the teacup work on top of its head. And then I got this comment. I think the yellow puppy is so cute and the various elements make me happy. But as a concept, I like the piggy best. Having the cup on its back with its tail curled around it, the colors, and the possibility of a teapot belly pig for its evolution is such fun. You've convinced me. Man, I wish I was doing evolution lines. That is such a cute idea. Teapot belly pig! That was the exact moment I decided to mesh all three concepts together, but to keep the pig as the base. And the final design, I'm gonna be real, I think it's my favorite Fakemon design that I've ever done. Like, I know that's not actually a huge accomplishment since before this video, I've only really done like the Volceron line and started the Pikachu line that hasn't been made public yet. But I just, I, I am so happy with this BB. I like him a lot. Our last two cards are a fighting type Cubone. I think that's fighting, maybe it's ground. I don't know, it's kind of ambiguous. And an electric type Pikachu. Hmm, fuck you. <laughs> So I came to a really weird revelation while I was grabbing my references for this electric type Cubone, which is that I think most electric types are actually pretty organic. Like aside from the ones that are completely inorganic, like Electrode and Magnemite, electric types largely don't tend to have not alive things on them, like accessories or armor or quirky things they like to carry. Maybe that's accessories. And I don't know why that's shocking me so bad. Like I got lost on this hold side quest trying to figure out if I was onto something or if I'm just dumb. Here's what I found. Obviously we can rule out steel types immediately, obviously. Uh, let's exclude all the legendaries. Fighting types pretty often have some sort of accessory like Primeape's little bracelets or Machamp's belt. A lot of water types have shells or even fucking guns. Bug types have armor out the wazoo, dark types have stabby bits. I went through Pokedex one type at a time, and I made a mental list of which types often have some sort of presumably inorganic parts to its anatomy. And every type has them, just some more frequently than others. But as far as I could tell, electric and grass types had them with the least frequency out of all 18 types. And grass is, is kind of like a funky little exception because these guys are decked out, but I would count the flora bits as alive parts of their anatomy because they're grass types. 
So I came to this little discovery, and admittedly, this tripped me up so bad because I figured I should try a concept with a skull helmet anyway, but I was feeling pretty strongly like I should pick a design that didn't have that helmet and instead just try to keep the head shape recognizable, maybe base it off of Kangaskhan since people theorize them to be connected a lot. And I also still had to give him something to hold on to in place of his bone, like that's pretty quintessential Q-bone. So I tried a few things like a little lightning bolt and some stuff you could have picked up off the streets, like a, a ground rod or half of an electrical plier, you could shank someone with it, I don't know. I thought maybe if I just made his head white and I gave his face some strategic markings, I could emulate the idea of a skull without just keeping it. I was, I was really hung up on this and it was really fucking me. Like I didn't, I wasn't thrilled with these designs and I was actually on a work call with my team at the time. I was showing them the drafts and they were giving me some really good commentary and feedback, saying things like, oh, giving him a spikier tail would look more electric, and the, the bone weapon replacements didn't really bode, and we were all tossing around ideas for what we could do about the helmet. My good friend Izzy ended up suggesting that I take a page out of Toxtricity's book and I replace the bones with a mask made up out of electricity. Like, I like that. I, I like the idea of keeping the shyness of his personality by having him conjure up a mask to hide himself with. So I started on the sketch for the final version with this in mind until Izzy sent me this. I love this guy. I don't even care that he's got a bone helmet. He looks rad as hell. We conceptualized him together. We birthed this boy together. Uh, the emotional attachment to him is insane. So like with Patrick's Wulu, I finished up the design by using Izzy's suggestions. Together we built this baby. I'm just so happy with him. Whew. Which means it all comes down to you. After finishing every single other design I have for this video, I still had no idea how I wanted to finish this lichen rock. I still hated my initial drafts. I really wasn't looking to finish off another design I felt unhappy with. I still want to redo Breakson, but I thought about how two of my team members had given me really cute design ideas already. So partially for help and partially to make something with more sentimental value with me because all my friends had pitched in, I asked my remaining three team members if they could draw a water lake and rock, just whatever they thought of first, and then just give me what they had. And here's what they sent. I am so glad I asked them for suggestions because these are all so cute, all very different from what I had tried to do before. It gave me a lot to work with. Like the one that Robin sent me. This one, where his neck rocks were replaced with coral. Coral! Fucking coral! How did I forget about coral? I didn't even think about coral. I technically broke the rules. But I mean, it's, it's the end of the video. Fuck it, whatever. I made three more drafts based on the ideas that my friends gave me. None of them having anything to do with the Portuguese water dog. And I think the lesson I'm learning here is I just, I really gotta stop doing the thing where I get one concept in mind and trying to force it to work. Especially in the drafting phase. Even if I have a favorite concept, it's probably just best for me, time efficiency wise, to come up with a set of different things to try for the sake of testing as many things as possible in as few drafts as possible. Because my lichen rocks were pretty fucking nasty. And there's just a lot more mileage happening in these new concepts because they're based on all these different things that my friends brought me. In the end, I just took the concept I made expanding upon Robin's suggestion into the final design, just with adjusted colors. Kind of saturated by Pokemon standards, but clearly that's on the table now. And there he is, I like him. Oh my god, Coral. With Lycanroc finished, the challenge has officially come to a close. I think I learned a good bit along the way here. I'm still very much interested in whatever feedback you guys watching have for me. I know I didn't do perfect. I'd, I'd love to learn. I'd love to hear your ideas. There's always so much more to learn. I think though that especially uh, the, the learning how important it is to diversify my drafts was the real game changer for me in this moment. You know, I can take this, I can take this lesson, I can go back to my Pikachu video with fresh perspective and maybe even take, take a break to play. God, I hope I like the game better than I like these new Hisuian designs. Man, I, I really don't have time, but what if I just... Mm, this video took a little longer mm, okay, to okay, edit just a couple. than I thought, I need so I had some anyway. time to Gonna play during my breaks. It's lovely. I'm having a delightful time. New Pokemon aren't my favorite, but that's okay. 
Oh, but yeah, I still redesigned two of them for the Patreon outro. If you want to stick around and see. Hey, what's that? Patreon feeds support Pokemon. Patreon is an evolved form of Eevee. Its exact method of evolution is unclear, but after being raised in a kind and supportive environment and being shown generosity, it will grow into a Pokemon that will go out of its way to share that generosity with others. It is something of a cheerleader and enjoys spending time among its lovely community members who contribute $2 a month to view behind the scenes content. Because it is one of the few Pokemon who can imitate human speech, it can repeat the names of those who contribute $10 a month, just like this! Inugami Black, Tooth Lily, Chewy Ghoul, I Try to Fight, Higgs Maynard, Abigail Wargo, Silent Scream, It Fucking Wimby, Mario Medina, Zephyr Christos, EP Doll Studios, Smooshy, Maddie Maddie, Soli Sore Uvu, Gremlin, Fusion Fire, Buggy Boy NB, Nate Art, Aerofox 352, Kimiki Miata, Crazy Cake, Young Manor, Little Star, Diana Lillian, Brandon Bishop, Sylvia Garcia, Classically Electric, Kestastic, Spirit of Avalon, Princess of Pastels, Dragon Girl, Zachary Borges, Jack Ventru, Madison, Mix Flames, Monster Freak, The Legend of Alice, Danny Glitter, Stemphalian, Tiger, Capri Crocker, Nobody Named Nick, Ghostly Goat, Karina Floorline, Ali Mocha, Crimscoid, Zeolia, That Art Chick, Raven Troll, Phantom Bagel, Inferno Hurricane, Middle Z, Maddie, Just Some Pineapples, Kitty Freak, Gelinus, Jesse Rue, Deadly Wolf's Rule, Maddie, CJ Duffy, Hollow Jackals, Cyrus Cupid, Talon Aspinwall, The Sleepy Detective, Mark the Lark, Inferno Shulk, Sweetly Sinstra, Strawberry Kitty, Ben Gustar, Jesse Ariano, The Crystal Paladin, Artistic Dango, Emperor Dom, Fry Crystal, Sorta Friendly, Miros, Asteroid, Mim Silver Note, Oviv, Ouija Draws, Nerdy Arts, SL Emmy, Dishwasher, Queen Sonoko, Real Emmy, Never To Be Seen, Night King, Azzy Jazzy, Astro Belt, Soup, Furial, Sunset Lemonade, Lucas Mullins, V Rogers Art, Zweetech, Philip the Yoke, Lola, aka Sugar Skull, Melvonix, Adam Heggins, Seal Tunes, Exorcist Lilium, Gravity Drop, Haze, Sunlit Witch Sabrina D, Sammy Sammer, Dia, Mist, Ixchilia, Miss Contrary, Glasses Protag, Dark Souls 751, Andre, Dojo Kid, Right Collar 3 Tuna, Short Cake Snake, Doodle Crazy Meg, Blazes, Self Fast, Key the Queen, The Apathetic Ass Hat, Nekozawa, James Zamora, Night Mage EXP, Kotal Cuddles, Jakey Jelly Bean, Almost Dwarf Art, Warren, Project Imperium 5, Patty Melt, Scriplet, Chioro, Free Flight, Sam, Alien Drag Queen, Archibald Anarchy, Dylan MX, Molo Chew, It's Teddy, Shay L, Razory Ann, Hickory U, Christian Pitt, Violet Cat, Cody Richard, Johnny Stars, Aswick, Sienna, The Orc Cafe, Chara Stark Strange, Peachy Minty, Ashfear, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Prissy Antique, Antiqua, Dust Munchies, Fear Fox Love, Makaru, Jeremy Renninger, Russell the Jimmies, Kristaru, Deary at the Wind, Kirk Coleman, Nico Starcy, Gus Daniels, Andrew Robinson, Mickey Ann, Ingrid Elise, Sean M, Jordan Ripley, Tristan, Egoat, Galavanting Galliforms, Shinzea, Teeny Tiny Tross, Silver Shadow, Thunder Evermore, Funny, Dusk, That's Bobby, Starla Herman, Square Heart, Rain Jake, White Rhino, 2222, Tropical Road, Precure, Johnny Ariano, Luna Lou the Mew, Salmon Pro 16, Sydney Moore, Daphne Jolie, Tally, Boring Studios, Luna Yoku, Sarah, Dracos, Scully Sweet, Winrin, Dracoff, Cat Dagger 2, Weasel Bites, Ah, For Munch, Ski, Fields of Starlight, Jacob Goodwin, Hachiyubi, DJ Cat Meow, D. Henry, Wet Father, Avery Michael, Strawberry Kiwi, Junimo, Elolo, Fire Newt 451, Michael, Emma Rocky, Yakima Soul Queen, Matthew, Spooky Gal 55, Berserker 102, Meet Me in Montauk, Baby Girl, Leon Dexter, Martin Anderson, Rudio, Raven East, Any Star, Tyler Sharkey, Amy Villa, If I Was a Fruit Loop, Ray Cybertech, Jamie Cloud, Rainy's Corner, Spooky Soup, Found and B, Wolfie Bean, Mochi Mercy, Kyle James Taylor, Senior Walton, The Worm and Glimmer Collector, Chow Su, Rovel, Sathari Chaos, The Lyrebird, Cactus Princess, Sparky Knight, Ray Cost, Tazara, Rodendron Cat, Jalen, Scott Draws, Popsicle Personify, Enderon, Laris, Dolly Pop, Sakuru Love, Pragmatic Chaos, Wizard of Nine, Strawberry Bun Bun, Mia Bear Molo, Starling Studio, Snail, Alyssa Samson, Rose Shoot Stitcher, Rosie, Mincy the Benefactor, Ellie Momelli, Cinnabo Roll, Strawberry Bell, Corner Robinson, Fuck You Mason, Shadow Princess 878, Bunny Yip, Miku Mare Yaku, Jorge Alejandro Ramirez Dalva, Laka 2, Marcios, Devin J. Allen, Claire A.D., Red, Dog 
Warrior, Sirius Star, Besocile, Nikolai Falgaxian, Vendetta, Emma Baby, Honey Beast, TV, Goji Dragon, Disorlin, Dahlia Dreamcraft, Rosepast, PTR Draws. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great day!